undergraduate class comprising different levels, different years as you call it. You know, first, uh, well, second year to fourth year, uh, fifth year also because there they have a, uh, they can go for one year to do, um, you know, internship kind of thing, and so that, that becomes a five-year program. Northeastern is supposed to be the best co-op school in the U.S., so that's fairly common at Northeastern. So here we have all levels, and uh, we have a diverse mix from multiple departments, from civil and environmental to international affairs, policy, uh, neuroscience, what did I miss? Anthropology. Anthropology, what did I miss? Chinese, chemistry. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it's a it's a big mix, uh, but uh, and economics, but all of us are interested in climate. Goodbye, Monica. Bye. We'll get back to you. So um, we are all interested in climate change. In fact, today we went to IIT Mumbai. Uh, this was a talk on climate change. They had a visual showing how their faculty is distributed across disciplines pie chart. Our pie chart here resembles that, to, I mean, to a great extent. So that's the mix. Now we have been to Dharavi, and we have been, I mean, we saw the climate change lectures, we saw the urban science lectures, so we are now ready to do something. We are, we are angry. Mm -hmm. We are angry, we have That's the, that's the, that's the, um, the sort of the introduction for us. Let me introduce him. So uh, we have seen one side of the culture of Mumbai. We have seen Harari. He's going to talk a little bit about that. There is another aspect to Mumbai, which is the new entrepreneurial India. How much percent? Forty percent of India's GDP, right? If I'm correct, if I'm wrong. Forty percent of India's GDP comes from Mumbai. Uh, as we all know, wealth distribution is needed. It's wonderful, but without wealth creation, without wealth, there is nothing to distribute. Right? So it's all important. And this is, so we, we are going to look at that side of the culture. We are very, um, it's a pleasure to have Shubhamoy Chatterjee here, who is an entrepreneur in Mumbai. And he'll talk about uh, how that aspect of Mumbai works, that side of Mumbai. And he is fully aware uh, that uh, he was an investment banker at some point in his life. He's fully aware of the burden that that tag carries. <laughs> and, uh, um, but he, and then at, at some point he'll also talk a little bit about what the relations may be. Uh, for example, with relations to insurance, relations to other areas. We have been hearing from climate guys from uh, this, this talk, uh, I mean this urban talk. Where is the money? Where is the regulatory aspect? private sector is not contributing. We have at least one representation from this private sector that we will drill into death. Okay, so with that, Shubha Mai, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, good evening. Been a long day for you guys, right? Okay, shows. So, that's why I thought, let's forget the presentation. Let's get into a sort of an interactive session. Let's find out what uh, this side, as Aurok uh, rightly mentioned, this side of the you know the the private uh, corporate side. What what do we talk about? So as you introduced myself, I was an investment banker. Um, had this year been 2009, I don't think you would want to sit in the same room with with me. But uh, right. So here we are. Things have changed. So beyond that, uh, I uh, currently I am an entrepreneur. I became an entrepreneur about a year back. What I look at is incubating new businesses especially in the small medium sector. So the SME sector as it is defined here, there are no uh, regulatory definitions of SME, but really we're talking about those corporates, those companies which are in the range of you know, 50, 60 million dollars uh, turnover, how they grow to the 100 million mark, and then grow beyond into the uh, so-called the large space piece, or, and are much beyond that. So I look at incubating these companies right from seed or uh, even to their growth phase. So it could, in, uh, it could mean uh, doing their business planning, uh, me and my colleagues, uh, it would mean doing their business planning, it would mean 
uh, doing their risk assessment, it could mean uh, raising funds for them as well as presenting them in the uh, required forums. For example, a lot of these are social entrepreneurships, a lot of these are business oriented entrepreneurships. So depending on what kind they are, uh, we, we do present them. So all of you went to the Bharati, right? Uh, how many of you use Gucci products? <laughs> no, <pretty laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, how many of you would want to? Right. Uh, just a point in case, the uh, large portion of Gucci products are actually stitched in Bharati. Right? So, the point I'm trying to make here is, uh, let's understand the perspectives. So, the fantastic uh, Gucci handbag that you see in a showroom, might have been stitched in a, in a, in a sort of in a, a place and you, all of you been to Bharati, which business wise, uh, sustainable, uh, sustainability wise or any any format uh, seems a great challenge, seems quite a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to now introduce you to the other side of the of Indian business. So a little bit of uh, sort of theory or a little bit of things which have happened. India per se was a very closed economy till about 1990s. Uh, 1993, India opened up as an economy, allowing foreign direct investment, as it is called, into various sectors. These sectors are still fairly restricted, but a whole lot of sectors have been opened up. For example, um, FMCG goods, for example, retail, it's a very controversial sector again, but a whole set of these sectors. After nine, uh, now, from 1993 to 2002, there was a Good spurt of growth. I mean, uh, the students here from the economic side will agree to me. Uh, agree when you know it was talked about that rapidly de developing economies would be growing at fantastic rates of eight percent, ten percent. India, China, uh, Latam, they were told as the poster boys of the world economy. Post that, uh, things change, things slow down. But in this entire entire piece, there are two three things which have happened and which are worth notice which will be uh, or will come uh, in our discussion later. Firstly, out of this entire piece of growth, this growth has not been a very even-sided growth. It's a fairly lopsided growth. So, uh, you know, as they call the, uh, you know, the, the bottom of the pyramid piece has not really happened. It, the growth has been restricted to a certain set, sorry, a certain percentage of the, of the uh, population which is roughly around 23 to 24 percent of the population has really seen this that growth which we are talking about. Secondly, uh, as far as uh, funding is concerned, direct correlation in the availability of uh, sanitary napkins and reduction in amount of cervical cancer happening among this among the rural population. And cervical cancer by its very nature uh, happens to attack women across the ages from, so it, it starts really from 15 and pretty much up to 40. So it was wiping out a very relevant population. So the, the challenge there was, uh, the scientific napkins which were available in India and which were produced by, uh, you know, the Procter Gamble's and the rivers of the uh, world, you know, the world, nothing against these companies, were not, not cost effective enough to be bought in rural India. Where at that point of time, uh, you know, uh, affordability had become a question. So there was, uh, there was, uh, so there was one uh, uh, social entrepreneur who, who has created a product whose quality is uh, is is uh, can uh, medically cannot be questioned. So you know, the quality is fair, but uh, who, which has to be used frequently, it cannot be stored. So it has to be bought and bought more frequently. That product and which is almost available at one tenth the price, which is otherwise available, uh, all other available products in the market are available and that has been marketed and that has had a significant effect in terms of reduce, reducing in the states where they have been uh, introduced, uh, reducing the effect of uh, or incidence of cervical cancer or uh, thereafter. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, any product which is available or any value which is available across the world that has to be customized and changed into uh, India setup. And this is something which uh, a lot of corporates have been struggling with on you know on both sides of the table. For example, uh, and it is not it is not only to do with 
uh, FM fast moving consumer good products. It, it is across the board as to how to customize the product, make it less costly, and make it available or usable in the format which is which is which, which is required to be done. For an environment like Harami, for example, if you take out that, uh, if if I were to implement. Uh, all the hazard norms which ideally I should be implementing, right? Two things will happen. One, that unit has to be closed down. That's, there's no second thought about that. Secondly, uh, and here, please get me, don't get me wrong, I'm not supporting what is happening there. One, it has to be closed down. Secondly, the cost of what the, of the produce which is coming and which is reaching to you at a much lower cost and which is why you are buying from there, that will, uh, that will not be possible anymore. Once that happens, it, le it has a ripple effect on the social structure there. Because these are mostly, if you, I mean, you've been there, you've seen that mostly people from the same locality were working in those units. So that leads to those, <coughs> sorry, those units getting closed, uh, unemployment, and the rest of the elements follow. The question is, uh, all the so-called, uh, and yes, in India there are several regulatory bodies. There is a pollution control board which clamps down regularly on industries which are polluting, but these, uh, the uh, regulatory, everything, anything which is implemented is two uh, issues about that. One, it is always far and few, and secondly and very importantly, a regulator can only do so much, unless each one of us feel that we need to change that piece. And we need to come out with clear solutions as to how to make those changes in a more reasonable, cost-effective and easy manner. Because I, to reprocess a particular chemical, uh, we can get some very uh, uh, some very great ideas and do that. But is that implementable in an environment like Paravi? That is the question I'm going to leave on your table. Especially the set of uh, students who are studying building, uh, there, there are builder, uh, building associations, builders associations. If you have to get registered there, that is where you start looking at So, you know, uh, there, there is this one uh, gentleman who builds. Uh, uh, building, not buildings actually, he makes houses out of bamboo as a product. Okay, so it, it's, it's really second most. Um, Arch, Villa or something like that is more towards the southern part of India, which is Bangalore, Chennai, etc. So, uh, when I had met him and I, we were talking and I said that, so he said, this was just the beginning. Uh, uh, for example, I didn't know how bamboo could pop, poll uh, pollute, but then, because the Pollution Central Board didn't have a regulation against bamboo, they said that we can't also sign for it. Till such time, we can debate that whether you contribute uh, to the environment or you won't. After all of this, then you have to go to the Register of Safety, which is a set of three bodies at a local level, at a state level, and at a central level, who will tell you that the buildings which you make and the designs which you make are sustainable. That's about it.